Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. Before we get into tonight's game, I wanted to talk about the sponsor for this video, Card Conduit. Card Conduit is a service that takes the hassle out of trying to offload your extra cards. They provide top buy list value for your cards without all the extra effort of traditional buy listing. The service is quick and easy. Simply send them your unsorted cards, and then Card Conduit will sort, grade, and find the best buy list price for each of your cards. They are fully transparent, giving you a detailed report of exactly what you sent and what they are paying you for each card. You can also see exactly what you'll get for your cards ahead of time by going to their price check tool on their website. Their fees are reasonable and their customer service is fantastic. They process quickly and submit their payments super fast. I personally used Card Conduit twice before they ever became a sponsor. They were amazing, guiding me through the process and clarifying any questions or hesitations that I had. I got a fair price for my cards and they literally saved me dozens of hours in the process. If you sign up with my link in the description below or use the promo code POWER, you will also get 10% off of their fees when you use their service. So give Card Conduit a try today. I will be using them for all of my extra cards from now on and I recommend that you do the same. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Sean, piloting the partner pair of Thrasios Triton Hero and Bruce Tarl, Boris Herder. This is a Sands Black mid-range deck that grinds value until it assembles a winning line, typically using Eldritch Evolution. Sean's opening hand contains a Spell Snare, Swords to Plowshares, Wild Growth, Polluted Delta, Tarnished Citadel, and his London Mulligans are a Wargate and a Tundra. Next, we have Taylor, piloting Winota, Joiner of Forces. This deck, called Winota Snowball Stacks, uses its commander to cheat powerful stacks effects and attackers onto the battlefield. Taylor's opening hand contains a Soul Ring, Rograk Son of Rogah, Cavern of Souls, Spectator Seating, Snow-Covered Mountain, and Two Planes. After that we have Ben, piloting Sithis, Harvest Hand. This deck seeks to use onboard interaction all while leveraging its commander's cantrip abilities to assemble a game-winning combo. Ben's opening hand contains a Swords of Plowshares, On Thin Ice, Command Tower, Snow-Covered Forest, Carpet of Flowers, Argothian Enchantress, and his London Mulligan is a Seed Cradle Witch. Finally, we have Mike, piloting Yuriko the Tiger Shadow. This is a mid-range Doomsday list that looks to put tons of ninjas into play to accrue value and win the game through a Thoracal combo. Mike's opening hand contains a Polluted Delta, Ottawara Soaring City, Skull Snatcher, Chain of Vapor, Nashi, Moon Sage's Scion, Fierce Guardianship, and a Moth Dust Changeling. Without further ado, let's begin this tasteful Twilight Tailgate of Talkative Tauruses. Sean has the worst spelling of the name Sean, so everyone felt sorry for him and let him go first. Sean draws a card for turn and plays a Polluted Delta. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Tropical Island onto the battlefield. He casts Wild Growth, targeting his Tropical Island. He passes. Taylor draws a card for turn and plays a Spectator Seating. He casts a Soul Ring. He casts Lightning Greaves. He follows it up with a Rograk, Son of Rogah. He equips Rograk with Lightning Greaves. He moves to combat and attacks Ben with Rograk, sending a message. The table laughs and Ben takes zero. The turn moves to Ben. Ben draws and plays a Snow-Covered Forest. He casts Carpet of Flowers. He passes. Mike draws and plays a Polluted Delta. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He casts Moth Dust Changeling. He gives the turn to Sean. Sean draws and plays a Tarnished Citadel. He follows it up with a Sylvan Library. He passes. Taylor draws and plays a Cavern of Souls, naming Human as it enters. He casts his Commander, Winota, Joiner of Forces. He moves to combat and, in response, Sean taps his Tarnished Citadel to help cast Swords to Plowshares targeting Winota. Winota is exiled and Taylor gains 4 life. Dismayed and with his plan foiled, Taylor passes the turn. Ben draws and in his first main phase he has a green through his Carpet of Flowers. He plays a Command Tower. He casts Argothian Enchantress and ends the turn. Mike draws and plays an Ottawara, Soaring City. He moves to combat and attacks Sean with Moth Dust Changeling. Sean declares no blocks and, in response, Mike Ninjitsu's in his commander, Yuriko the Tiger Shadow, bouncing Moth Dust Changeling to his hand. Sean takes it and Yuriko triggers. Mike reveals an Ornithopter into his hand. In his second main phase, he casts Ornithopter. All finished up, Mike passes. During his draw step, Sean draws two extra through Sylvan Library, paying eight life to keep them both. He plays a Command Tower for turn. He casts his commander, Thrasios, Triton Hero. He follows it up with a Land of War Elves. He ships the turn. Taylor draws and plays a Plains. He casts Chrome Mox, imprinting Draneth Magistrate. He recasts his commander, Winota, Joiner of Forces. He moves to combat, and in response, Ben casts Swords to Plowshares, targeting Winota. Winota is exiled, and Taylor gains four life. Taylor questions whether he's in some sort of time loop, and the table assures him that he's not. He passes. Ben draws, and in his first main phase, he adds a green through his Carpet of Flowers. He casts his commander, Sithis, Harvest Tan. Argothian Enchantress triggers, and he draws. He plays a Bountiful Promenade as his land for turn. He follows it up with a Root Maze. Argothian triggers, and he draws. It enters, and Sithis triggers. Ben draws and gains a life. 
Sitting in a strong position, Ben passes. Mike draws and casts Brainstorm. He draws three and puts two back on top. He moves to combat and attacks Taylor with Yuriko. Taylor takes it and Yuriko triggers. Mike reveals a Seagate Restoration and each opponent loses seven. In his second main phase, he plays Seagate Reborn into play tapped. He casts Fairy Seer. It enters and he scries two. He passes. During his draw step, Sean draws two extra through his Sylvan Library, paying four life to keep one extra. He plays a Forbidden Orchard, entering tap through Root Maze. He taps his Tarnished Citadel to cast his other commander, Bruce Tarl, Boris Herder. It enters and Sean gives Thrasios double strike and lifelink until the end of turn. He moves to combat and attacks Taylor with Thrasios. Taylor takes it and Sean gains two life. The turn moves to Taylor. Taylor draws and plays the planes, entering tap through Root Maze. He casts Zealous Conscripts. It enters and Taylor gains control of Mike's Yuriko, untapping it. He moves to combat and attacks Ben with Yuriko. Ben blocks with Sithis. Taylor passes. At the end of Taylor's turn, Mike regains control of Yuriko. Ben draws and in his first main phase, he has a white through his carpet. He casts Seal of Primordium. Argothian Enchantress and Sithis trigger. Ben draws two and gains one life. He casts Utopia Sprawl, targeting his forest. Argothian and Sithis trigger again and Ben draws two and gains a life again. Utopia Sprawl enters and Ben names White. He casts Miri's Guile. Argothian and Sithis trigger, Ben draws two and gains a life. With a million cards in hand, Ben passes, discarding to hand size. Mike draws and decides it's time to deal with the problem at the table. He pays four life to help cast Dismember, killing Sithis. He moves to combat and attacks Ben with Fairy Seer, Ornithopter, and Yuriko. Ben declares no blocks and Mike ninjutsus in Skull Snatcher, returning Ornithopter to his hand. Ben takes it, Yuriko triggers twice, and Skull Snatcher triggers. Mike exiles Swords to Plowshares and Aired Mesa from Ben's graveyard. Then Yuriko's triggers resolve, Mike reveals Tetsuko Umizawa Fugitive into his hand, with each opponent losing two, and Dark Slick Shores into his hand. In his second main phase, he casts Ornithopter. He plays a tap Dark Slick Shores. He passes. At the end of Mike's turn, Sean casts Worldly Tutor. He fetches up a Seaborn Muse onto the top of his library. Still in the end step, Ben sacrifices Seal of Primordium, destroying Sean's wild growth. The turn moves to Sean. During his draw step, Sean draws two extra through Sylvan Library, paying four life to keep one extra. He moves to combat and attacks Mike with Bruce Tarl. Bruce triggers and targets itself. Mike takes it and Sean gains six life. In his second main phase, Sean casts Dranith Magistrate. He gives the turn to Taylor. Taylor draws and plays a snow-covered mountain into play tapped. He casts Phyrexian Revoker. In response, Sean casts Spell Snare, countering Revoker. Taylor moves to combat and attacks Sean with Zealous Conscripts. Sean takes it and Taylor passes the turn. During his upkeep, Miri's Guile triggers. Ben looks at and rearranges the top three cards of his library. He draws and in his first main phase, he adds a white through his carpet. He plays a Horizon Canopy, tapped. He casts Idyllic Tutor. He fetches up a Sanctum Weaver into his hand. He casts Sanctum Weaver. He passes. Mike draws and casts Tetsuko Umizawa, Fugitive. He moves to combat and attacks Ben with Fairy Seer, Skull Snatcher, and Yuriko. Ben takes it, Yuriko triggers twice, and Skull Snatcher triggers. Mike exiles Seal of Primordium and Idyllic Tutor from Ben's graveyard. Then Yuriko's trigger resolves, Mike reveals Crippling Fear into his hand with each opponent losing four, and a Misty Rainforest into his hand. In his second main phase, he plays an Underground River into play tapped. He casts Moth Dust Changeling. He follows it up with a Mem Knight. It enters tapped, and Mike ships the turn. During his draw step, Sean draws two extra through his Sylvan Library and puts two back on top. He immediately moves to combat and attacks Ben with Bruce Tarl. Bruce triggers and targets itself. Ben takes it and Sean gains six life. In his second main phase, he taps his Forbidden Orchard, giving Ben a 1-1 spirit to help cast Seedborn Muse. One by one, the table pass priority and Seedborn resolves. Sitting in a very strong position, Sean passes. Sean untaps with Taylor through Seedborn. Taylor draws and casts Captain of the Watch. It enters and Taylor creates three 1-1 soldiers. He equips his Captain of the Watch with Lightning Greaves. He moves to combat and attacks Ben with Captain of the Watch and Zealous Conscripts. Zen blocks Zealous with his 1-1 Spirit. Ben takes the rest and then Taylor passes. At the end of Taylor's turn, Sean activates Thrasios, scrying one and revealing a Green Sun Zenith into his hand. The turn moves to Ben. Sean untaps with Ben through Seedborn. During his upkeep, Ben's Miri's Guile triggers. In response, Sean channels Beseju, who endures, targeting Sanctum Weaver. In response, Ben flows five green through Sanctum Weaver. Weaver is destroyed and Ben fetches up a Savannah onto the battlefield tapped. Then Miri's Guile's trigger resolves and he looks at and rearranges the top three. He draws and in his first main phase, he adds a white through his carpet. He casts On Thin Ice, enchanting his snow-covered forest. Argothian Enchantress triggers and Ben draws. On Thin Ice resolves and exiles Seedborn Muse. He follows up with a Green Sun Zenith where X equals 2. In response, Sean taps his Forbidden Orchard, giving Ben a 1-1 Spirit to help activate Thrasios, scrying 1 and revealing a Breeding Pool onto the battlefield tapped. Then Green Suns resolves and Ben fetches up a Destiny Spinner onto the battlefield, shuffling Green Suns back into his library. He plays a Razor Verge Thicket into play tapped. He casts Lana War Elves. Ben gives the turn to Mike. Mike draws and in his first main phase, he taps his Ornithopter to give Moth Dust Changeling flying until end of turn. 
He moves to combat and attacks Ben with Moth Dust Changeling, Yuriko, Fairy Seer, Tetsuko, Skull Snatcher, and Memnite. Ben takes it and Yuriko triggers three times. Mike reveals a Marsh Flats into his hand, Ninja of the Deep Hours into his hand with each opponent losing four, and Prosperous Thief into his hand with each opponent losing three. Ben dies and Seedborn Muse returns to the battlefield under Sean's control. In his second main phase, Mike plays a Marsh Flats. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Swamp onto the battlefield. He casts Mox Diamond, discarding Gemstone Caverns. He cast Crippling Fear, choosing ninjas. The non-ninjas on the board are all nuked, and then Mike follows it up with a Cursed Totem. Now sitting in a very commanding board position, Mike ships the turn. Sean draws and casts Chromox, imprinting Green Sun Zenith. He tests Forbidden Orchard, giving Mike a spirit to help cast his commander, Bruce Tarl, Boris Herder. It enters, and Sean gives Seedborn Double Strike and Lifelink until the end of turn. He moves to combat and attacks Mike with Seedborn. Mike blocks with his spirit, and Sean gains two life. All finished up, Sean passes. Taylor draws and recasts his commander, Winota, joiner of forces. He casts Ornithopter. He equips Ornithopter with Lightning Greaves. He moves to combat and, in response, Mike casts Chain of Vapor, bouncing Winota. Taylor sacrifices the planes to continue the chain, bouncing Seedborn Muse. Sean decides to stop the chain there. Taylor, really hoping next game that he can get a Winona trigger, passes to Mike. Mike draws and plays a Misty Rainforest. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an island onto the battlefield. He casts Prosperous Thief. He moves to combat and attacks Taylor with Moth Dust Changeling, Yuriko, and Skull Snatcher. Taylor blocks Moth Dust Changeling with Ornithopter and takes the rest. Yuriko triggers twice along with Skull Snatcher and Prosperous Thief. Mike creates a treasure and exiles two cards from Taylor's graveyard. Yuriko's triggers resolve and Mike reveals a Watery Grave into his hand and a Demonic Tutor into his hand with each opponent losing two. In his second main phase, Mike casts Demonic Tutor. He fetches up a card into his hand and then immediately delves away some of his graveyard to cast Temporal Trespass. It resolves and Mike gets an extra turn. He passes to, well, himself. Mike draws and immediately moves to combat, attacking Taylor with Moth Dust Changeling, Yuriko, Prosperous Thief, and Skull Snatcher. Taylor blocks Moth Dust Changeling with Ornithopter and takes the rest. Yuriko triggers three times along with one Skull Snatcher and Prosperous Thief trigger. Mike creates a treasure and exiles two cards from Taylor's graveyard. Then Yuriko's triggers resolve and Mike reveals a Mystical Tutor into his hand with each opponent losing one. With his other Yuriko triggers still on the stack, he casts Mystical Tutor. He fetches up a dig through time onto the top of his library. He reveals a dig through time through Yuriko, and each opponent loses 8. Sean dies, and with his final Yuriko trigger on the stack, Mike delves away some of his graveyard to help cast dig through time. He looks at the top 7 cards of his library, puts 2 into his hand, and the rest on bottom. Then Yuriko's final trigger resolves, and he reveals a swan song into his hand, with each opponent losing 1. In his second main phase, Mike casts Ninja of the Deep Hours. He plays a watery grave into play tapped. He passes to Taylor. During Taylor's upkeep, Mike invokes Magic Tournament Rule 3.13, revealing his hand full of counter magic, asking if Taylor would like to concede the game. Taylor, unfazed, decides to keep fighting. He draws and recasts his commander, Winota, joiner of forces. He casts Aven Mind Sensor. In response, Mike casts Force of Will, paying a life and exiling a blue card, countering Aven. Taylor equips his Winota with Lightning Greaves. He attacks Mike with Winota and Ornithopter, and finally, after a grueling game, gets a Winota trigger. The audience cheers, and Taylor looks at the top six cards of his library, putting Mentor of the Meek into play tapped and attacking Mike. Mike declares no blocks and takes it all. Satisfied with his single Winota trigger, Taylor sees the writing on the wall, concedes, and Mike wins the game. Ladies and gentlemen, what a game. Congrats to Mike on his win. Mike fought through the stacks and counter magic and slowly pulled ahead. He stuck to his game plan and flipped card after card with Yuriko, whittling down his opponents. His targeted selection and heads-up gameplay crept him to the victory line. The most valuable card in tonight's game goes to Root Maze. This card slows the board down. With every land entering tapped, players have to completely change the way they play when Root Maze resolves. While it didn't translate into a victory, it had a huge impact on the outcome of the game. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time when we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.